Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another. Uh, it's the quick view only. It, it's uh, going back in time. It's digging in the crates. It's it's the tires that predate the current tire testing protocol, the 10 station protocol, scoring a tire from 50 to 99. For those familiar with the tire test protocol, you will know what those numbers mean. Rather than zero to 100, we have 50 to 99. This is, of course, the quick view redux where we are testing it again, but there are things that do not qualify for standard quick view in, that, in which that it is not being tested on the default Canyon custom insert, whether that be soft fronts and medium rears or softs all the way around. It is being tested on whatever insert happens to be fitted to the tire, and the tire is on whatever wheel the tire happens to be fitted to. Because I put together and take apart enough sets of bead locks in a week, usually we are testing a set of tires that are already in the fleet. There are some reduxes that will indeed prove to be the exact same as a regular quick view, only it's not like our first experience with the tire. So that's the part that qualifies as a redux. If we have hours and hours and hours on a tire, like when I redux, uh, if I were to redux a Canyon Trail or pretty much anything J Concepts Baja Claw for Mercy Four Wheel Drive, we have wheel time on those tires. So we know how to drive to those tires. The quick view gives us just the raw, we don't know what this tire is gonna do. We don't know how it's gonna do it and we go at it. So the tire, to, the tire du jour, the tire estadia is the J Concepts. Is the Duratrax Fossil. The Fossil. Oh, it says it on this side. The Duratrax Fossil. To my knowledge, as of the time I'm holding this tire in my hands, the Fossil is still available. It is the only crawler tire uh, that, to my knowledge, is still being produced with Duratrax on the sidewall. Following the full horizoning, Duratrax is effectively dead as a brand. They have scuttled it effectively and ceased their collaboration with Louise, Louise being the OE tire supplier for Duratrax since uh, effectively time immemorial. Uh, for those unfamiliar, eh? So this is how it used to be. All of the Duratrax tires had some sort of Louise equivalent. To my knowledge, this tire was not produced by Louise. The rumor is that the, the, the OE producer of this is Proline. So it does not say C3 anywhere on it. It also has a number 4077, which kind of falls more in line with Proline's numeration. Well, this is a 10213 on the Mickey Thompson Baja Pro X. So I don't know. We don't explicitly know where it comes from. It is definitely a tire that is in the middle because now you can source Louise tires. You can still find some new NOS on the Duratrax tires, but to my knowledge, Duratrax is gone. These are the tires from a fleet vehicle uh, known as the GFO. He runs a very uh, positive offset, a very positive offset. Uh, it, it is very uh, similar to the 105s that we use for testing, but he's running, a th I think it's a 6 millimeter hub. So baseline's going to get tucked in a little bit. He is also running, these are aluminum ring, and he has two brass ring. So he's running a split set that will be a little bit advantageous, and perhaps the most advantageous. The biggest advantage that the Fossil will see today is that they are fitted with none other than squid inserts. These are squid inserts made for Duratrax tires and uh, the GFO, aforementioned GFO, has been running on these for some time now. These were selected as his pretty much everyday forever tire. Uh, the sidewall reads 4.75 by 1.75 by 1.9. We'll be the judge of that. Oh look at that, it's 118. That's 475 and uh, 48. It's 118 by 48. I have definitely said this in the past. If you if you take 10 tires sold as 
class two, uh, they're going to be they're going to be one eighteen by forty eight. Oh, I need grams. I've started to think almost in metric two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five, and two fifty five. That's why I weighed them. They all started to feel like they weighed the same. I had them split into two pairs. I don't know. I did a lot of shoveling recently, and maybe we've got a left-hand, right-hand disparity going on. We'll find out. Either way, either way, either way, either way, either way. Baseline, at least for the, the time of getting his shoes on, is looking fly. Uh, I feel like I can't, I feel like I can't, see this body enough okay what's loose nothing something's loose yeah look at the can you see the amount of stud now it, it's not enough we're talking I think relative to what he ordinarily runs I think we're looking at about eight millimeters narrower give or take uh, it's like it's Notable, but it might not be noticeable. Well, you really got to do run those uh, those those wheel nuts go. They go way down. He actually looks pretty good on a little bit narrower stance. Baseline looks good on everything ordinarily. Uh, baseline with this body looks especially good. Look at that boy. The he looks good in everything. This is this is one of the fundamental problems. Like, we could run those wheels and tires, we could run whatever. This is something about this body. This body above, uh, I mean, this paint job, yes. But this, that Sendero, the SE body, it's, it's real good. Because even when we put him uh, back in his work clothes, you know, your work clothes and your dress clothes are different clothes. Unless, I guess, you're like a Mater D. No, Mater D's definitely don't work tuxedos to go to the Starbucks. So they would have different work clothes. Uh, it just happens to be that if you're a Mater D, your work clothes are probably nicer than your regular clothes. Baseline uh, fits more into a, uh, a typical... These are his uh, dungarees, as we have uh, come to the conclusion here as a collective, that we are unable to take that body that is now sitting behind me and uh, use it to self right a vehicle and uh, smash it down hills over and over again as baseline is starting to wear thin at the corners from rubbing against the ground so much. So we're gonna do what we do. We do the standard protocol. We hit the 10 stations and we get a score and there will be a constant evaluation going on in the background because we know. So he's brass rings all the way around to get to a full kilo of wheelos. That was 255 times 4, 1020. That's going to help. Squid inserts are going to give us the compliance. That's going to help. So we're going to see about where these fall. I have a recollection of where I think these will fall. So again, those preconceived notions, they put enough haze over the battlefield to prevent this from being a straight up quick view. But we test them nonetheless because we, 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 we make an effort to be objective. All I can look at is how much wheel stud is out. We could put some uh, some chariot spikes on there. All right, to the rocks with baseline. He's going to do his best to be fair and impartial, and we will do the same. We'll meet you outside where hopefully the overcast will hold for about 30 minutes. One type of yellow flowers stops falling just in time for another type of yellow flowers to start falling. We know what we're looking for. Surprisingly, uh, hmm, jumpy and about jouncy. Surprisingly jouncy. On flat ground, he's really soaking it up, but on on descent stuff, he's a, he's knocking about a little. Get a little shuttle around. There's some little hops there. Now there is the possibility that most 3D printed inserts uh, have some kind of directionality to the veining in them. And because they've been mounted a specific way for a long time, those veins may be aiming opposite. So we'll see if he smooths out over time. 
definitely no loss of compliance here. Yeah, no, no lift. Doesn't, doesn't even try. But is it dropping us too low to hang the belly? A, a little, a little. Mm. That was a lot more forward drive out to one side than I would anticipate. So it's a little more quick view than Redux in this aspect because I'm anticipating the characteristics of a Canyon Custom Soft or Medium. Yeah, there's more, I mean, there's more forward drive. It's 3D printed, so we're gonna get a little more forward out of it. That little more forward is gonna come at the expense of other things. You have a, there is an, a total available grip. You can only get so much grip out of a tire a tire of one type or another only has so much grip in it. And uh, you can move that grip around. Yeah, we're a little biased towards forward drive, which is not explicitly a negative unless it's borrowing too much from some other aspect. It, it, feels, it feels pretty balanced out. It, it, it really does. This, this tire is behaving uh, very neutrally. We'll give it the uh, slow-mo go. Okay. Augered. Yeah. It, uh, uh, on this insert, it's like dropping, a 475 is gonna ride more, I would say like a 455. It's definitely bringing us down. Again, nothing to do with the tire. So we have to, uh, we've got to adjust to that accordingly. So we'll see here if that lower height impacts the break over or if the tire has enough to, to get us over. Yeah, this is not the combo I would choose for him. Despite the GFO being a very similar configuration, Yeah, we have to watch, not the moments where we're fighting to try to find traction because that's us fighting the insert, which the GFO is about the same weight too. Sometimes there's a, a, an unanticipated magical formula. These are not better than the Canyon Customs on baseline. Yeah, it's, you know what it is? It's... This is right in the meaty middle, is what we're looking at. The tire, which I'm trying to view exclusively of its insert, is, it's doing that which is asked of it, basically. And, uh, so we're only looking at or for failures. And like any, like when we were getting a little Oh no, he's much better on the straight cut here. Yeah, any line that emphasizes forward drive over positionability is gonna do even better here. And when, I don't wanna sound like I'm hacking on the 3D printed insert. I'm saying that we're talking, uh, the, 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 the net differential is probably like two to three tenths because this insert is optimized for a different rig and not for this one. And for him, he'd be a couple tenths higher on a different, same tire, but different insert. The takeaway from that is that Baseline could easily be running fossils and have a comparable level of performance to his currently fitted tire. But I think this insert is not, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's why we don't run the pretty body. I can't subject the pretty body to this. We're, it, it's too much skewed towards forward drive. Ooh, little bit of collapse there. Yeah, that, that little driver rear, I could get to a point where I would have a handle on that squish. Look at that. It's so good through the middle. 
and it's three strikes, you're out. Okay, so am I too? What? That that no, that was a uh, that was an, a ball low and outside. We didn't we didn't swing at that pitch. We didn't we didn't get a good look. Yeah, again, it's all mental math trying to separate tire and insert here. Okay, a little higher cut, so we'll see if we can put less pressure. Okay, no turn. No, it, it, does, it doesn't have it. There's no weight on the, on the high side, none. Yeah, so many adjustments that need to be made mentally. Leaf blowers and ever-changing lighting conditions. Oh! Mem remember what I said about that forward drive? That was... That's outstanding. Oh. Whoa. So... Big side hill on this configuration is not where the squid fossil, uh, sound like a Wookiee, uh, is where the squid fossil lives. This is where it lives. Oh my gosh. I just, there it is. I just missed the spot on the first hit. Or, okay, Rochelle Hodgson, yes, well. So this is the situation where the squid fossil lives. Nah, I couldn't get it on the second. Oh, it's right there. Oh, that's so much drive. That's a, that's a lot, a lot of drive. Oh, right over the L and wow. Uh, it is a good thing for a, a noted number of tires on the board that we can't put this just an unadulterated score. This score has to be adjusted because these tires have $50 in inserts in them, and we're attempting to settle, and I'm not talking about you, a baseline. Uh, that was a 97 performance on the Beast, at least. I would consider a 98, because, can you just do it every time without even trying? Yeah, Ooh, ah! and now I'm remembering why they're on the GFO. GFO handles the side hill better than baseline sim configuration. That is, that's a clinic. So what we hope is that here in the realm of positionability, we're gonna get a little more look at the tire, the lug performance, rather than the inserts doing their thing. Pull it over the side. Yeah. It's quite good. It's quite good. Little, I was gonna say a little wide, but that that pirouette up top, that's 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 not a thing. Oh, Ve very very settled, very settled. The ability to pull clear right there, over there, little to no effort. I am not exaggerating. Oh, look at that. So it's just that, that, that pure, like that, the, the transfer at Yellas is the perfect storm of bad things. And when we get into a more quote unquote real world situation here, is that gonna slide down? Is it gonna catch? It's gonna catch, but not tight enough. We can't, we can't hold that against the tire. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna pull, pull like he's shouldered up. We're gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give you two numbers. I'm gonna give you two numbers on this. We're gonna give you the, the, the adjusted fossil number and then the squid fossil number. The squid fossil number is going to be higher because this isn't even optimized. So the insert is either a little too firm for him, a little too, I think it's a little too soft for him, honestly. He could use a little bit firmer the way he places his PSI, but it's still gonna be a higher number than the fossil gets of its own merits. It does occur to me now, as I had glanced over my shoulder at the side hill, 
uh, we may have uh, re unintentionally received an answer to the question, uh, what difference does eight millimeters make? <laughs> because he's skinny. He doesn't look it, but that tire, we got perfect tire tuck over there. He's, he's almost as narrow as you can get. We could actually, well, we could go probably, ooh, 16 millimeters narrower, an amount narrower that I would not want to trifle with. Drive, so much drive. Oh, effortless. Bump. Yeah. Now, a good insert can make a good tire better. No insert known can make a bad tire good, or even better, really. If you took these squids and put them inside something that's pretty terrible, the, the insert is just the seasoning. The dish has to be good to begin with. Uh, these are good to begin with. That's, yeah, it's... Oh, we do not get we do not get big energy return out of the squids and oh, that was good. Unless we're really trying. Like, bam. Bam. Even there. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Some combos, you can't get the donkey out. You, you can't get out any kick out of them. Most, I mean, you can. But you have, because the forward drive in this combo is so high, you, you have to give it like two beans, not, not a plate, not even a cup, not a cup, not a bowl, certainly not a plate, just, a, just a sprinkling of beans. And you, I mean that right there, grabbing, there's a good, so what we're more looking at is the, the profile of the bump. What does the bump look like in terms of how loose do we get? How wide do we go? It's, it stays nicely centered. The, the Louise Champ slash Duratrax Deepwoods is our sentimental favorite of the Duratrax offerings. But there is every possibility that the fossil is actually better. Not in terms of compound or construction, but simply in terms of like that fairly generic sort of if you squint it looks crawler-ish uh, I think there's a versatility to it and then paired to the right insert they're pretty sharp yeah for how narrow he is the self-writing ability is is straight up catching me off guard and look, he does not want to fall maybe they maybe those ribs have redirectionalized now oh i hope that was in frame i don't think it was though there's a dang old hawk dang old hawk just flew right over that's pretty cool uh, there's a comedian that has a bit about when you get older, all of a sudden, sheds and birds, all of a sudden you're, you're obsessed with sheds, and all of a sudden you start looking at birds. I didn't notice when it happened either, but man, I see birds and I'm like, well, that's a cool looking bird. Yeah, that's super predictable. A redux with two numbers, that's what you're getting today. I think this tire also, so if you're gonna get into pure muck, uh, I think the edge, still leans to the champ slash uh, aka deep woods uh, this tire is about 50 50 in terms of open space versus lug space but uh, they're all lugs of the same height they are basically not there's not a lot of siping to the lug so the lugs aren't going to conform as easily and i think because of that homogeneous lug height I think they might hold on to some goop a little harder than like say a deep woods. Also deep woods deeper tread. Let's try right here. That's like, that is a hot combo though. I, uh, I have not wheeled the GFO in a while. 
and uh, fresh, fresh memories are being made. Yeah, these are solid. Yeah, uh, there is definitely some of the speculated redirectionalizing happening. Uh, these tires have gotten slowly but consistently better from as each obstacle group has has passed behind us. These are these are solid, and I think because we're looking at a non-scale scale tire. There is no such thing as the real world Dirt Trex fossil. Its tread pattern might sort of mimic something that actually exists. But in terms of something scale, like at least of scale appearance, if not scale translation, these do absolutely solid. There are a lot of tires that I would take, I would choose this tire first. Oh, we got into a big webby. Big old webby, get that off of there. Uh, I would choose this tire over others with more scale, more true scale appearance because we get a real even consistent traction profile and the in, with these inserts installed, this is elevating. It makes a, not a good tire better, but a better tire even better. I'm not going to say best. There are there are tires up there living in lofty environs that you would be hard pressed to catch. But the score definitely jumps. We have, we've got those two, two and a half, we have two and a half scores. And uh, the higher score is definitely squid based. So as we pull up close here for the final, I really wanted to see, I wanted to see a straighter line to that. Okay, right here. Come back here. What's my chatter? Yeah. A little bit less chatter, a little more, a little more set in. A little more set in. Now there'll be wet yellow flowers, just for the fun of wet yellow flowers. Okay, not full wet on the tread yet. We need to, okay. Well, I mean, that is solid. You know what? Let's be unfair. What's going to be unfair? He is going to get a score. It's looking a little dry right up there. Okay, them, them rocks, they've been subjected to some 90 plus degree heat, they're thirsty. Oh, he ain't care. He ain't care. Good on you, Fossil. I thought for sure. I had uh, I had no recollection of wet on the Fossil and I thought for sure he was gonna stumble. But instead, we were gonna get what I'm going to call an interpolated score. Interpolation was the number that was in my head, and the word salad that I could chop up for you in the salad bowl isn't quite as good as what we'll get as a strict def uh, direct definition. In the mathematical field of numeric anal analysis, interpolation is a type of estimation, a method of constructing new data points based on the range of a discrete set of known data points. And if we're not deep into the well of pseudoscience here in the canyon, then I'm uh, not entirely sure where we are. So we do have a known set of data points. We also have a new set of data points, which has been created today. And then we have an interpolated set of data points. And we are in, we are in effect interpolating the, the, the smaller number. The higher number is the squid fossil combo. I would give the squid fossil combo based on interpolation and adjustment a 97. 97.0 is what that tire gets. The Duratrex Fossil interpolated to have a different insert in there, I would put, or, you know, a non-optimized insert, let's say, just something generic, I would put at a 95.5. That is, that's the interpolation. It's just, and the difference between, you have to, you have to recall, that is one and a half points at 10 stations. So that's basically just under 
two tenths differential, and it's one and a half tenths, it's 0.15, at each station, which is nothing, which is nothing. That means that it did basically a tenth better or worse at what, six stations? And then did two tenths better or worse at two stations, if the math is right. It's something akin to that. So it is the splitting of the finest of hairs. I would, I would regard this tire as effectively interchangeable with tires the likes of the S1 Canyon Trail, the Yokohama Geolander from Vanquish, but with, without either the, with none of the caveats, okay? You are going to roll your sidewalls up like a crawler on a Yokohama Geolander. You're going to have to take your S1 Canyon Trails and do the, the mighty 400 cuts and cut out every other lug. You don't need to cut the lugs on these. You don't have to worry about the sidewalls wrapping up. You don't have to worry about a compound that's so soft that your knuckle is gonna get, is gonna bind the tire between a rock and the knuckle, and the knuckle is gonna open the inside sidewall of your tire like a can opener. So for that, you could interpolate another score and put and give it a score based on those sorts of tangible intangibles somewhere between the 95.5 and the 97. So in effect, this tire near optimized, a squid insert in a fossil is almost, in my estimation, your results may vary, interchangeable with a tusk on a basically just like a generic insert. But that's where it gets sticky, right? Because if you take a tusk and you put a shimmed injora silicone in it, you've spent, what is that gonna cost us? Tusks are still 27 a set. So that's gonna cost you about 75. This is gonna cost you closer to 100. Do you, do you see what I'm coming Do you see where I'm coming from? So if you don't want to spend the 25 extra bucks, you're looking at more in the 95s. Mid to high 95s. Mid no, I would say in the 95s. As low as a 950, maybe up to a 95 996. But if you optimize your insert and full disclosure, this is the insert th this insert was made for a several times mentioned Dirt Tracks Deepwoods. They just, they just, they just fit. They just fit. There's a li there's a little bit of sidewall bag on each side, about two millimeters. Uh, the outer band around the top is about two millimeters. It's a near optimal combo. I just personally think, in my own estimation, in my own interpolation, that the fossil squid is not super optimized to the rig that sits before you, right? Every rig has a, has a tune and you will, because the tire and the insert are a fundamental part of the suspension. So baseline suspension, this wheel and tire are between a 95 and a 97, depending on the day, but could be worse, could also be even better. Although I don't, I don't know. We could get a few tenths better. But I feel like this setup is, is, is pretty close to as close as it can get. It might be the difference of honestly, to, uh, if there were no brass rings in the rear wheels and we just had less rear weight, so we'd get a little bit less collapse. It's that kind of tuning. This is that last 2%. And we're not worried about the last 2% of tuning in a quick view redux of a tire. I am 100% content with a 95.5. I think that the squid fossil combo would get would net you about a 97 uh, if your rig weight is in agreement with the insert. It's a solid option for a tire. It's right in there. Uh, I think Interco IROC is right in there. It's an absolutely solid option. And it is, I think the worst thing that you could say about it in terms of appearance is that it is inoffensive. It looks like a tire. Uh, it has the nice Duratrax method if you can mount them inside, right side out, or wrong side in, or however you want to call it. Uh, we have the names facing in, so it has smooth black sidewalls on the outside, or you can have the names facing out. You can do whatever you want. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what to do. 95.5 for the Fossil, 97.0 for the Squid Fossil. Uh, solid. 
solid. There are two sets in service in the fleet, and uh, I ain't mad about it. So hopefully you ain't mad about it. I'm glad you joined us here for this insert, uh, this installment here in the canyon. We've got construction sounds, we've got leaf blowers, we've got hawks, we've got it all. A little early for lizards, apparently. I don't think I saw a one today. Uh, maybe next time. Uh, in between now and then, please one and all do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time here from Canyon with whatever shenanigans we're getting up to on that particular day. And uh, Baseline is happy to have performed a tire test that does not feel insulting to his soul. Every once in a while, it's a good one, brother. Reduxes are pretty much going to be solid experiences for you, and he is all the more glad for it.